All right. Welcome to the Spark and Plug Talks episode number 10. Yes. Yeah, I knew it this time. Got it. As uh, per the usual. Wow. He's a, he's, he breaks <laughs> I'm the mega 10. prepared. That's he right. breaks the 10. Somebody's ten been times. watching Sesame Street. Yes, sir. <laughs> Every morning. Uh, <laughs> this is episode 10, dude. This is actually pretty cool. Anyways, as per the usual, it is me, Delon. J Rod, at your service. Ron Dog. Ron Dog in the house, and we are with the fantabulous Kenny Pooh. Hello. Woo! Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming out, man. Thanks for, are you, where are you coming from, Shawnee? Northwest OKC. Northwest Shawnee OKC. is my hometown. That's my maiden town. That's your maiden Oklahoma town. Oklahoma City is Shopton. my married town. Okay. Chirac. Okay. Yeah, Shopton. Chirac, yeah. So, sorry. Okay, so uh, how, how long of a drive was it out here? Uh, 40 to 30 minutes, not too All bad. Right. Not the worst, not the worst. I-44 okay. 40, uh, East. Where are you about? Cool. Dope, man. Is it like Northwest off? OKC. Northwest oh, OKC. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, like a Bethany area? Uh, a little north of there. Okay, right Around cool. the Memorial Road. Uh. Cool, man. Dope. Well, Kenny just got done playing three uh, three of his own tunes for us, and they were all great. They were all awesome. Thank you. Absolutely enjoyed the songwriting um, and the uh, the lyrics and all of them, dude. I thought they, pr- they painted uh, some really cool pictures. Oh, thanks. And um, we'll start with song number one, though, just Armadillos, which I, lo- I love that one. So, uh... Uh, kind of take us through your your writing process for for that specific song, and uh, it sounds like a pretty pretty personal one. Come, it sounds like it's a kind of a POV, uh, maybe maybe of a certain Kenny Pitts. Yes, yes, uh, total KP POV. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> I wrote. I remember writing the initial riff. I'm the son of a father, son of a mother, uh, type of deal as a almost like as a joke. Because you never know where something's going to start. Mm. Mm. Uh, and then it kind of, you, you might even hum something from there. And then it evolves into the more, you know, you chisel down into your soul where it's truly coming from. Because it's coming from somewhere. And uh, so then. The, the cockles. Yeah. The, the heart. Cockles even, of even, your heart. Even the cockles of your heart, perhaps. Maybe even down in the. Subcockle area. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> uh, we're going lear e here. <laughs> Hey, um, but uh, so it just the funny thing people might ask, hey, uh, why do you have that line? You know, my mom was born on New Year's and my daddy on the 4th of July. That's their actual birthdays. They were oh, both. No <laughs> wow, dude. That's so were be... you actually born in California? Yeah. Wow. How damn. So, yeah, every, <laughs> every line is true. Oh, my God. I mean, you know, my, when I was little, my sister could kick my ass. Same. <laughs> she was uh, she was born in the middle, and I was born last. It's same. It's <laughs> Aaron. Your sister could still kick your ass. She you, could. You and yeah. KP have more in uh, common than you. Than Jamie whipped my ass into the week, dude. She can throw down. <laughs> now I never have a line in there that says my sister uh, cannot kick my ass now. So I mean, she could kick my ass when I was a kid. It's like that. Uh, <laughs> it's like that uh, uh, Mitch Hedberg joke. When I was younger, I did a lot of. Drugs. I used to do a lot of drugs. I still do a lot of drugs, but I used to too. So it might be the same thing. She might be able to still kick my ass, but the line is that she, she used, used to. to. Used to. Used to. Good. Perfect, uh, man. But yeah, it's kind of like uh, just an evolution of everywhere I've gone, and uh, just kind of a hodgepodge of uh, lyrics, almost kind of, in a, almost kind of like in a hip hop type of uh, cadence and putting, yeah, 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 yeah. putting together type of, or even like the band Train, which Train has a kind of a hip hop cadence mm-hmm. to a lot yeah, of yeah. their stuff. So it's kind of, it's kind of one of those uh, very kind of up and down. Yeah. You know, yeah. Stringing yeah, your lines together and stuff. And yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I can dig that. Yeah. I like that. Did you uh, come across that cadence uh, kind of just naturally or were you kind of emulating somebody? It came naturally because I, I was like the from the from the chords and I was like I really like the way this is going back and forth up and down and uh just kind of was like it was kind of fun to write and I've had it for quite a long time now. Yeah. Cool. Right on man. And it seems like that Armadillo song is um do do you miss being close to the Armadillos? It seemed almost a little uh wistful. I do. And you know the funny story is uh, Acme Road and Shawnee after about a year or so when we moved to Oklahoma from California. My first armadillo, I remember seeing on Acme Road crossing it as we were going to see the very first Red Dawn movie in the theater. So that's kind of nice. gives you Fantastic. a nice. time stamp. <laughs> and, uh, that and, was... a, and a wonderful picture in my mind, <laughs> truly. <laughs> so, yeah, it's kind of, you come to Oklahoma and, uh, you know, I never saw an armadillo. Of course, I was seven when I moved. So there were a I lot I was going to of... say, how old, like, yeah. how was that? 
transition? Uh, was it was it weird or was it just kind of like what to see oh, a different place? Oh, yeah. oh they said transition to like seeing your first armadillo. No, I was like, <laughs> I mean, yeah, they're pretty fucking weird looking. If you've never seen one, <laughs> they are. Until yeah. you yeah. see a possum, yeah, goddamn marsupials. Is ar- armadillos a marsupial, right? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Wait, well, no, no possum. Possums, possums are not a marsupial. I don't know if an armadillo. I don't know what armadillo is. Actually, so I think armadillos lay eggs. Wow, really? I think. I Let thought me, they gave birth. I thought you could see those little tiny armadillos. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're like Hold that on. big or something. I'm going like to pull that. Jamie. Jamie. Somebody pull said, that up. I still think somebody said armadillos, they all have uh, leprosy. Wow. They do carry leprosy, yeah. but it's only the females. Oh, okay. Wow. Oh, wow. How'd Damn. You, how'd you know that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> He's probably in the doctor's office and reading like a Nat Geo well, magazine. Just like, wow, who would have thought? No. I was going to say, like, was that a random was a And they're like, Jared, uh, point for Jared for a uh, hemorrhoid check. He's like, oh, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Little do we know he has leprosy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> Sorry. It's now a bad time Sorry. to tell you. <laughs> nah, Yo, well, man, you touched me. Good a time as any, I guess. Are you Did you find anything? Hold on. Well, in the meantime, dun, dun, uh, dun, yeah, dun, how was your transition dun, dun, from, dun, dun, dun. was it California to Oklahoma? Uh, it was great. It was cool. Uh, I look back and I think I, I see a lot of differences. Like, my dad uh, worked at General Motors. And I don't know if you guys remember, like, in the early 80s, there was a uh, big influx of people from the coast to work at General mm-hmm. Motors. Dan's, um, uh, Dan's father-in-law, or, or maybe not father-in-law, Tammy's. Tammy's dad. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's why that, he came that here. That was a GM dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, he, cool. he moved yeah. here. And he had, like, I saw the inside of his shop. That dude had, like, an entire shop completely beautifully lined with every single ratchet shot oh, nice. everything of the everything but a 10 millimeter yeah <laughs> yeah still loses but, those fuckers now my dad had a lot of tools but yeah it, i'm sorry it, i didn't mean to interrupt no no that. no it wasn't in order <laughs> oh it's <laughs> thrown it'd be thrown around yeah. and he'd be like who the fuck keeps on using my tools you guys don't put them back <laughs> in the right spot and it's just like but when he gets done with it he just fucking throws it in the yeah. bucket yeah. and shit okay. so it, back you know. to the armadillos oh yes oh. thank you <laughs> They do not lay eggs. They do give uh, birth to live young. Wow. What I was getting confused is they always have called quadruplets. All the babies come from the same egg. Of uh, you know. Oh. Yeah. What a fascinating creature. Yeah, that's pretty. F- they yeah. also make a great soup bowl. I didn't know that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what? You know, Dukes of Hazard movie. Yeah. <laughs> Skeeter. What? what? That was his name too, wasn't it? Skeeter. Something like that. He was like, make a pretty good soup bowl too. <laughs> and spits a big old dip out and shit. That dude made the whole fucking movie. That movie was actually pretty funny when Skeeter was on 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 the screen. You're talking about the Johnny Knoxville. Yeah, one? yeah, yeah. He like runs around in his underwear and shit. He's got tidy whities on and stuff. He also played in Super Troopers too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah picks yeah, up yeah. the corn dog out of the trash. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're like throwing shit at him. Stuff. They're like, no. Yeah, he picks up a picks up a hot dog or something. Jesus. Like, I haven't that? seen that in so long. I don't. Super remember. Troopers. No. Oh well, Super Troopers. Yeah, but uh, the, the original Dukes the of Hazard movie. Yeah, it's actually it got some funny parts in it. Yeah, I mean it's. I don't know. Some of those 2000 movies, they make me cringe too much. Like there in certain some, parts. No, there is I get some parts, hardcore but, cringe. But the Skeeter shit's pretty fucking funny. Like, they always have <laughs> like a completely unnecessary, yeah. massive sexual element to them that I just think, this doesn't need to be. Like, you could have had more funny stuff. Oh, yeah. Well, in the Dukes of Hazzard movie, they totally, like, they take, like, a whole 30-minute segment to go to, like, the University of Georgia and, like, find some girlfriend. And they're, like, they walk in on, like, yeah. a, like a two chicks, two dudes, or a chicken and dude fucking... And it's just like, why? It, yeah. It, why? We were, why? Doing, we were doing really good 45 minutes in, and then we just had to throw in the woman element. Yeah. 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 I mean, what? Whatever. Like American you Pie, know. you know? Yeah, yeah like, that's the whole premise of that movie. It's like, it's like. It's like, <laughs> I get it, man. Like, just show some titties already, dude. Yeah, Please, you know, just do I mean, it. What, I'm, I'm just like, what is it? Anyways. Anyways. Worthless payoff. They're all on PG-13, <laughs> so it never gets. It, just, it yeah, always just yeah. gets on the edge, <laughs> yeah, and it just, just like just, backs off. You're. you're, you're 12 year old self, 14 like a, year old self, yeah. just yeah. disappointed. Yeah. It's like watching Mansters on Spike. I'm not approved, <laughs> but I did think it was weird because I grew up with Uncle Jesse just being the standard dude of the Duke House. Uh, yeah. And uh, then he's cussing in the movie. It was Willie Nelson, right? Yeah. 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 And so it was weird to see Uncle Jesse doing that much cussing because he was like yeah. the Aunt B of uh, the, the Dukes. Mm-hmm. So it was weird that, you know, it wasn't horrible, but it was just I don't, weird. I just I don't thought. think anyone asked for like a. PG thirteen leading into R. Nobody asked Dukes for that. Hazard. Movie. Nobody. Like no one asked for that. It was like the that you remember that one movie that came out just recently about um it was like the rated R uh Muppets. Yeah. With oh, like yeah. Melissa oh, murder, oh, yeah, murder one. Murder. Yeah. Yeah. That one was kind of promising. 
I, I watched it, it and be... it was promising. It was okay, but then it kind of started delving into the okay, we're just doing the cop out movie thing of like mm-hmm. they kind of like had a cool premise, but they kind of like you know she's like it's a typical like detective movie trope thing where mm-hmm. like one of them was up and coming, one was on the down- downfall, mm-hmm. and they have to work together and they're opposites. I, I, and all I just that saw shit. a bunch of like t- ads for it, you know, and I was like, that looks like it could be funny, like. They got, they mm-hmm. got some, like you were saying, they got some kind of promise there, but I don't, I, it ended up yeah. having some shit ass yeah. ratings on IMDb and that's, I hate unfortunately how much, that's where I go. I hate how much IMDb <laughs> has influenced my movie watching. Like sometimes I want to give shit a chance. Cause I'm like, nope, got a 6.2. Must be anything <laughs> good. Must be pretty average. Well, I mean, Kenny, you know a whole lot. Speaking of movies, you know, you know a bit about them, right? Yeah. yeah. Been in a few. Been in a few. I am uh, acting now. And oh, please I, name them man, off. What, what well, I went, uh, well, just uh, some local ones, and uh, I, I got to give a shout out to my group, Outsiders Productions, out of Shawnee. Of and uh, yeah, uh, the last one that I worked behind the scenes, we did uh, Out of Exile. Um, oh, yeah, that was, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw all the stuff you guys had posted about that. Yeah, that's online right now. Uh, my buddy Adam Hampton, who's part of the Outsiders, he uh, played the lead in that. And then that also had uh, Peter Green. He played uh, Zed from Pulp Fiction and The Mask and Oh no shit! Of, yeah, he was in that. That's I got, cool. I got to hang out with him quite right. a bit. Uh, Jake the Snake Roberts was in it. Fantastic! Oh, oh my, that's he has a really good documentary about yeah. how he kind of came back oh, and totally. He, he, that that documentary is really good with Diamond Dallas Page. Yeah, DDP. That a really good yeah. documentary. DDP is like one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. He's yeah. so fucking cool, especially in that movie. What's that movie with uh, the wrestling movie with uh, Ready to Rumble? Ready to rumble. Oh, I man. I love that movie. <laughs> I was even a huge WCW fan movie. back in the day, but yeah. I just, oh, man, I, I hated that movie. Really? I <laughs> love that movie. It gave me such good, like, nostalgia vibes. He's like, oh, man, I hated that movie. <laughs> Fucked, <laughs> fuck WCW Nitro, dude. Fuck those guys. Man, my <laughs> uncle gave me a Goldberg, uh, like, best of Goldberg VHS tape when I was, like, I had nine. a lot of those. Mm-hmm. I like, best of the Hardy Boys and, and like, shit. Yeah, this is so yeah. cool. Yeah, I did uh, at one of the showings just a few months ago because the movie's been wrapped for a while. We shot it about two years ago of Out of Exile, but uh, just about two months ago, I got to uh, be the driver for Jake the Snake and Cheryl Roberts up in Tulsa. Yeah, Yeah, drove from the hotel to the theater and stuff, and it's the same Cheryl Roberts from the uh, gimmick uh, twenty something years ago. Whenever Rick Rude was trying to. uh, you know, approach Jake yeah, Snake's yeah, wife. Yeah. They're back together again, and it's just, so it was, cool. Good for like, him, man. Yeah, it was really yeah. cool. What was the movie Out of Exile about? It's about you know, it's a it's a uh, it's a cop. Or, yeah. Or a, yeah, it's a heist movie. Oh, heist, that's great. Bank robbers. Sorry, yeah, I yeah. love heist movies. That's nice. So uh, yeah, they're in that Danny Boy uh, from uh, House of Pain. The hip hop oh, yeah, group, yeah. Mm-hmm. Danny Boy's in it. Uh, who else? I'm leaving. Van Quattro. He lives in uh, Texas. He's uh, he was one of the detectives on uh, Fight Club. He's in it. Oh, cool. I think who else? Badass. Uh, couple. Did, you know, they're all my. You know, a lot of these other guys, are my friends that were local from around here, were in it too. Uh, Kyle Jacob Henry, uh, Wilson Novice. They're all from around here. They're awesome, pretty cool. Dude. What actors. is a? Uh, is it on any like service or can you? Yeah, buy it's it on it's on all. Service? You can buy. You can buy rent it. It's on all the. Uh, it's on all the major like platforms. And stuff. Yeah, all that, yeah. all that stuff. Cool. Dope. Man. Yeah, you yeah. might have to look to see uh, specifically after this because I don't want to quote the wrong uh, platform. Right. Okay. Yeah. And was it filmed sure. in Shawnee or is it filmed in like, uh, all Shawnee, Oklahoma? Oklahoma City, cool. and even some in Yukon and just all around Metro and the outskirts? Hell yeah, man! That's and awesome. and I, I, I caught, um, I caught a little bit of uh, when you guys did the. Uh, Read the showings of uh, unusual calling of Charlie. Christmas. Oh yeah, yeah. I caught a little bit of it. Oh, I that's cool. Leave. I had to leave. I had to bounce, but I caught a little bit. Thank you for coming today. Well, yeah, no, I, I walked in and you know I was like, oh, this is cool. And I go and sat down, watched a little bit of it, and then, um, yeah, I might had a, had a bit of an emergency. I think oh. that was a. But anyways, anyways, I had to bounce, but yeah, I was like, oh, are they gonna <laughs> do it again? But hopefully, yeah, you guys show it again because I'd love to see the full thing yeah th- um, thanks badass yeah i played the lead in that it was a superhero movie and uh interesting thing because that uh won best picture at a lot of film festivals and comic cons oh, uh, cool. it was a superhero movie so we were able to get in the comic cons mm-hmm. and it was just uh pretty cool to do that to be in new york uh convention florida supercon and uh, that's amazing yeah it was it was a cool time uh and it's the funny thing about that one is we, you know, having no money, we shot for quite a we, long time, a couple, mm-hmm. you know, two, three years on that one. And in the middle of that, we had XL1 standard definition. And then right in the middle of all that, 
things were changing to HD and things like that. So it's like, uh, it just was a wrong time to keep in that standard definition. Uh, but, yeah. And it's not online anywhere. Uh, hopefully sometime in the future we'll have a, you know, a bootleg and, or something like that or have it online <laughs> soon. To they Just call me, man. I'll set up the little tripod in the theater and it'll be like. It'll shake every now and yeah, then. Yeah, be like in yeah. Russian subtitles and shit. <laughs> yeah. <You're>, yeah. <laughs> Cause I, I consider it like a, a cross between Napoleon Dynamite and Batman. That sounds amazing. The trailers, the freaking Batman, pretty funny. Gosh, <laughs> yeah, the trailer, the trailers are good. Did you rip my bow off? They're awesome. Well, okay, yeah. So, anyways, before we've we've gone down this path many times, but let's lead back. That's a path the, I always love going down to the to to your music, man. So, okay, oh, so we talked about armadillos, yeah. and uh, what about your uh, your second one, uh, Ada? Yeah, I uh, mean uh, that's got a. What else could it be about? Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> it's got to be about the 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 city, and and mm-hmm. you said you went to ECU there. Yes. So is that kind of is it like about kind of your time spent just in Ada in general, or is it more about uh, college? Uh, a, l- a little bit of both. You know, the, even I'm trying to think the, uh, going back to the lines, left my hometown when I was eighteen and a half. You know, go down to Ada. It was even more low key than than Shawnee was, and so it was even more of a country town that didn't have a lot in it. Uh, it's got a lot more now when I go up to it. It's crazy how much more is in Ada. And so, you know, I, uh, I've had that song in my craw for a while and, uh, it took a while to get some of the words out. You know how that goes. Yeah, and, of course. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, just, uh, everything, <laughs> everything in that was true. I, I was a night guard in the dorms and I'd play my acoustic guitar out in the parking lot. Uh, that's where that one line comes from. And, uh, I used to be a DJ at uh, KTLS, Good Time Rock I remember, and Roll. Uh, in that in that bio you sent me, there was some info about you being uh, at the radio station. And yeah, your communicate in your uh, major was in mass communication. Yeah, mass right? communications. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you you spent a lot of time there at the radio station DJing, and I was there for about a year or two. Okay, uh, and it was a cool experience. I was the only on live DJ at the time, and. Uh, uh, we all have the same JP sen- yeah. coming in hot, hot, hot same hot, sense hot, of humor hot. here, and <laughs> I would say nothing horribly wrong, and I would get complaints like, uh, just uh, I, I would do a contest. Hey, call in, call in number five, call in right now. There was no contest going on. It's <laughs> like, hey, congratulations. He's like, what'd you win? I was like, you didn't win anything, but congratulations for being you. <laughs> And people were getting pissed off. <laughs> I only did that once or twice. And then uh, I, I did, a you know, uh, tried to do, I don't, I say this at my gig sometimes. I'm like, I tell good and bad jokes, but you don't know which ones are good and bad till after they've been told. Yeah. That's kind of the way it was on the radio station too. So I remember one time I was uh, talking about uh, ladies having a problem with leaving the toilet seat hmm. uh, up. So I was complaining about that. Hey, how? How hard is it to look back and pick it up? You know, that classic thing. And I was like, from now on, I'm not going to, I'm uh, not going to put it back down and I'm not going to flush anymore. And I got complaints for that joke. Really? <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> Major- Never mind. Man, everybody, nope, everybody, here. everybody in Ada is just stuck up, aren't they? <laughs> I guess they were pissed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. Doo-doo-tsh. That's the end. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> well, that's fantastic, man. Uh, do you uh, do you think uh, what, what, if right off the top of your head, which city's which city's better, Ada or Shawnee? Oh, I mean, my hometown is Shawnee, but Ada has Blake Can't Shelton. Can't beat that pepper gravy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hell right. <laughs> but you know what? It's my great copyright strike. I mean, maybe we should measure on like how much methamphetamine is cooked. I mean, God. Shawnee, Shawnee or Shawnee takes the cake for sure. You think so? Yes. Yeah. Ah, yeah I, Dude, I can't disagree with that. Houses, Shawnee's pretty fucking messed up. Some man. of those houses on the south side, man, are pretty Oh, yeah, over by the old bowling looking. alley. But they're so nice. You get over they're, there by that newer Dollar General. Yeah. Like those, some over of those there houses, there, the you could tell at one point they were really nice houses. They used wrecked. to be. Now they're like... Cool, like co- look like colonial style yeah. houses and now shit. Now they're all roach infested. They're kind of gnarly. Some of them are kind of gnarly. Yeah. True. But uh, you know, why why shit on Shawnee? I do but the ones by the flour mill too. Hmm. That, those are pretty sketchy too. Yeah, the, yeah that, that's by that do- that Dollar General. That's a, the newer Dollar General. Yeah, 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 right yeah, yeah. Shawnee, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. But yeah. Uh, they do have great personalities. Oh yeah, hell yeah, sure. dude! 
Yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I will say, though, the, yeah. fi- the Firelight Golf they Course They're is right. super nice. Yeah, I mean. It's, uh, it's very nice. Pretty good fried bread, too. Uh, but good. speaking of that, I drove through it for the first time since the tornadoes came through. Oh, it's so bad. That's going to be timed. I didn't. I knew that a lot of things had gotten uh, hit. I didn't realize it was kind of that constant, especially up and down, Did like you, the maid's. Stri- was it just strip. like recently? You drove, like I drove yesterday. Okay, so like the day mm-hmm. after. So I've been working up there. Oh, and it was it was just you couldn't even get down Kickapoo. It was completely shut down. There were really? power, line, power yeah, lines all over the road. Man, you know it's weird to think about like how there's never been like a even like an F three or F two tornado like in downtown Oklahoma City, like in the oh, metro yeah. downtown. Like, what would that look like? Like an F three, F four tornado just. Maryland down those guys. It's pretty rivers. wild, dude. That would be I mean, crazy, dropping. wouldn't it? And the fact that we li- that never happened. Is it even more wild though to think that more has just gotten destroyed? Like, and they're just like rebuilt. Like, dozen rebuild. fucking and, times. Like, how many times did they got like rebuilt for them to be like, hey, maybe we shouldn't. Live it's like here. I was talking about with my dad. They should just build an entire city underground. Like you just drive in on I thirty five and it's down there, nothing. and then it just it's like, just completely empty plains. And then it's just like, what is that? What's that? And it's Oklahoma City. Like you cross the river. And it's just Oklahoma City. For some reason, this it, it makes me think of like the city looks like Osmosis Jones City or some shit. Like I don't know why, but like that's what that's the vibe. Dude, I, get. I used to watch Ozzy and Drake's all the time. Dude, Osmosis Jones is an awesome movie. I fucking love it. I when know he, why when they he don't. Eats the circus peanut. That shit makes me so hungry. No, why they don't build an underground city? Yeah. Did you ever watch because the of the reptilians? Series? A little bit. Yeah. yeah. What? Well, okay. I can't, I've spoke. Explain yourself, KP. I've I've said too much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's just been eviscerated. Got it. Get him. <laughs> yeah, he's just like it's just like what's the Joe Rogan thing where like he just like the alien comes in, it's like Whoop, and Joe Rogan's just like that's why I imagine he's like morphs into an alien. We're just like, oh my fuck. Oh my god. Uh okay, so yeah, okay. So we talked about Ada. And well, and these are all off of um you you recorded uh five song? Yeah, yeah. yeah five song little uh an EP and but you you have like a there's quite the story behind that like you went to nashville hit up shit with uh zach malloy yeah zach malloy did, of the nixons yeah did a whole bunch of stuff man i mean talk 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 a little bit about that because that's a it sounds like quite the um yeah zach really know. set himself up pretty good in nashville man he made a really good career out of it yeah yeah he's a pretty nice guy uh i met him at uh he has a oklahoma songwriters fest a couple of years he does like he's the head guy for it or like did he organize it i think he's i think he's the top because i've guy. seen it a couple like they had they, had they haven't had it in the past couple of years have they i think maybe covid yeah i, stopped I it. think i think after, i think when remember. covid hit because i remember before covid it was like kind of like a regular thing they yeah. were having it like a big one at ta- the last one i remember was at tower theater and yeah. it was like a big but anyways i'm sorry oh yeah, yeah. Uh, no uh yeah he he's definitely got something cooking yeah yeah he uh we met and uh like it's interesting story kind of adding to what you might've read is like, uh, with the show we did play it loud. Uh, I was working behind the scenes and I hadn't been playing live music in a while. And, uh, hearing all the stories about all the musicians doing their things, which you guys can probably imagine too. It's like motivate you to want to do it's it. Super inspiring. Like, yeah. like in the, I hadn't been playing in a while and I had kind of always put a lot of my music on the back burner uh, when somebody asked me to play, now I'm playing more than I've ever played. I was gonna say, man, you gotta play what one, two, three times a week. Yeah, Something it's like it's, it's kind of getting to the two to three times, the two times now. It's a uh, a week. It's it's cool. Maybe there'll be a slow time coming up, but who knows? I'm just kind of I've never done this before. But then I was kind of it was on the back burner, like with Outsiders Productions stuff we did and acting and things I did. So it'd be like when a friend hollered at me, "Hey, would you come open open up for us?" Yeah, I'll do that. And would you play for uh, beer and pizza? Yeah, I'll do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so after even having that on the back burner, not really playing in a while, uh, I wanted to be on the songwriting side. Mm-hmm. That's kind of where I wanted to be. I was like, hey, I can be an actor and songwrite. That's kind of a cool That's pretty combo. cool. Yeah. Trying to. And, uh, but I was just getting so motivated and inside frustratedly wanting to do more after seeing everybody's mm-hmm. story. Hey, uh, you know, I'm a musician too. I, I, I need to do something. And so I met Zach uh, at the festival and I was like, we talked for a while. Uh, he was really cool, open and warm. And I was like, Hey, can I send you a couple things and see what you think? And I sent him a couple songs. He was like, Hey, these, I like these. These are really good. He was like, the next thing you need. And I wasn't thinking about me being a performer again. I was still just thinking about the songwriting, songwriting side. Aspect, yeah. And so, uh, cause I almost got somebody else to, since I was hiring him and hiring people to, 
come in, I was like, should I hire somebody else to come in and sing it to be, you know, to be a better, uh, what am I trying resume Mm -hmm. to have more things in a line. And Zach was, he was saying, you know, when you're the writer and the singer, you have a little more into it. So it wasn't a hard talk into, I knew there was a part of me that wanted to be like that. But so I did that. And, uh, you know, I showed him a couple and he, he liked a lot of them. So we had a hard time kind of, uh, picking which ones to choose, which he said that was a good problem. And uh, we co-wrote one together, the 99 Problems, but a horse, horse ain't, ain't one. one. Yeah. He, he liked that title, and uh, it wasn't as deep as some of the others. So, And I really need to get more into co-writing. That's where a lot of the things happen and that I've heard in Nashville, that a lot of things are more co-written. Right. And so yeah. I was like, hey, let's do that. Uh, okay, would you want to co-write this one? He was, he was totally cool about it because he liked the title. I had kind of a, it started already in a, almost like a finished song. So, and even though it was Zach, one of the guys that I loved, even in the Nixon's funny story, Homecoming, like I remember driving to college to Ada, which he's from Ada, listening to the Nixon's when they were first coming out because that was around that same time. Wow, full circle, man. Yeah, it's so weird. So uh, he's, uh, he takes the song and he texts me just a vocal voice memo of his version of it. And I was like, oh, before I played it, I was like, what am I going to think? Am I going to hate it? Is it going to be ruined? Because, you know, that's, those are your babies. Even if it's kind of like a, a goofy title, a goofy mm-hmm. type, they're still, for me, they still come from the heart yeah, in some right. place. So he sent it to me and I was like, oh man, I was pissed because I, it was better than what I thought it would be. It was better than the, the version of that that I had. And so I was like, oh man, this is really good. So then I took that and added to what he had done. So, and I guess, you know, that's co-writing. Yeah. Building yeah. and building. But we did it remotely. We were never in the same room in the writing. I gotcha. Just text back and forth. I think whatever cool. whatever works. Yeah, mm-hmm. whatever works. You, t- you So do you, is your writing process typically like, is uh, you, you start with uh, maybe a personal experience or something like that? Is that kind of what you, how do you, how do you start to build a song? You know, I have uh, uh, notes. I'll just write titles down if a title comes to my head. Uh, Kanye. I'll, I'll write. Uh, That's what he does. I'll write three lines down, and then wonder, hey, is this going to be a chorus? Will this be a bridge? Will this be a verse? And just kind of go from there. Sometimes I'll just write a, uh, uh, and that could just be all the words. Sometimes I'll just uh, start with the riff. I don't, I don't have any set way whether I write the music or the vocals first. And now with the cell phones and the voice memos. I'll just record something real quick for 10 seconds. Oh, you know, put these yeah, lines yeah, up yeah. and that helps. And then I need to go back to that. I have a lot of notes in my phone that I need to go and organize and create some new songs. Oh, I, have, I have a ton, man. Mm-hmm. I have a ton. Yeah, for sure. But I'm I, in the same boat. I have no set way. It's really about a feeling. Just, yeah. There's a, there's a high I get. We were talking about spirituality a little bit ago. And it's the same thing with acting. There's a high I get in the back of my head that uh, just if I'm on the right path for me, yeah. I mean, somebody else could think the song's a piece of shit, but that doesn't matter as long as it's coming from the heart, from what I like. Right. Uh, and that's where I want to go. Yeah. You know? yeah it's yeah, hard yeah. to get over that, like, writing, when you finally achieve that way of thinking, like, writing for yourself, yeah. you know? That's something I still struggle with, is when you write something and you're like, well, what if this was a buy with somebody else, mm-hmm. you know? And then you realize that, like, you know, there's probably at least one other person in the world that thinks the way you think. Yeah. yeah. You know, so or, I mean, you know, people are listening because they like what you do, mm-hmm, you know, yeah. and it's like they like what other people do, but they like what you do. And that's mm-hmm. why they listen to you. So you should just keep being you. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it, into it, it goes yeah. back to the comparison is the thief of joy. You start thinking about yeah. that too much and it'll mess with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure, man. For sure. I'm not going to lie. That would be a bitch in album name. The thief, thief of, of joy. joy. Thief of joy. Nice. Wow. Nice. <laughs> well, uh, okay. Let's, uh, so <laughs> Ada, and then we have uh, My June, mm. which uh, I really like that. I think that was my favorite one. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Yeah. So, uh, very, very melodic, very pretty. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, you know, I just think it was a. Anytime you cape up that high, you get really cool. <laughs> yeah. Pretty yeah. tones on it. It was a, it was a really well written, oh, well you. Uh, visually, you know, you could kind of hear painted a really cool picture with the seasons and, oh, and everything like that did when you wrote that song 
were you thinking about it in that way, using those as like metaphors? I yeah, I like multiple meanings and things, and I like mystery. Which, as I'm uh, I'll talk about something else here in a minute, as I'm studying more like hit songwriting and trying to do that, uh, there's difference. Some people don't like that mystery, but yeah, it definitely was the mystery, but uh, uh, or definitely definitely double meaning, but. The song started because I watched an interview with Chris Christopherson, mm. and he was talking about Johnny Cash. He said Johnny Cash could have done it without the uh, booze, without the drugs, without even the music, it meaning live. But he said he couldn't have done it without June. And so I wrote that song. And really, that was one night I wrote the song. Wow. That's cool. Okay. That's a cool story, man. Thanks. And you, uh, and like, like you were saying before, so these are all on a five, uh, Five E song EP. Yeah, Armadillos is not. But Armadillos, the other, is the other two. Okay, cool, awesome. Yeah, you can't contain Armadillos in a five song EP. <laughs> nope. <laughs> it's tell, you, tell you what. Sneaky do, you, do do you have uh do you have plans to uh I know you have uh you do a lot of solo stuff but you also have Kenny Pitts and the Raging Peacemaker. Oh yeah, yeah. And so you um you have plans to do like uh more albums with them. The I would love to. Like? Yeah, because those guys are really uh really add so much to it and it's it's cool when you have people that believe in the song who's the guys uh we have chad franklin he's from blanchard but lives in uh, 10 killer now he's the drummer nice uh wade anderson he's uh from the shawnee area and lives in okc uh he's the bassist he's also chad and wade the bassist and the drummer are also the uh, drummer and bassist for patrick winsett and the foolish pride band nice you know patrick uh he, they play a lot around together now. And then uh, the lead guitarist is uh, Russell Anderson. It's Wade's brother. Oh, right okay, on. Cool. So cool. It's, uh, it's a really cool group we've got. And ever since the pandemic, uh, we haven't really played a lot. We had one gig about two weeks ago, which is the first Damn, two gig, weeks ago. First gig we had in about over a year. How'd it go, man? Oh, wow. Practice right before. We, only, we, did, we haven't even practiced in a while. We practiced that day, and we were like, hey, this is sounding good. Uh, it was rough to me that night. It was rough, but I, I don't know if anybody else thought that, but I thought it was rough. Man, those gates are always like Yeah, that, you're dude. always your own worst critic, you know? You always yeah. feel like, man, yeah, I stumbled at the gates on that one. Everybody was like, man. Eh. Well, I mean, it's like... I we, don't know about that. I didn't hear nothing. Yeah. We played last Saturday. Everybody was like, dude, you did so good. And I was like, oh, my gosh. I was fumbling all over the place. And I was just like, I did terrible. <laughs> like, no, it's so yeah, good. You're, so it's, you're it's, your own worst yeah, critic yeah. all the time. I did run into a guy a couple days later. Just saying the same thing, and he was like, "Yeah, it sounded like your guitar was out of tune." <laughs> he was like, always that one guy. Like, th- <laughs> he was like, "I think it was the G string." And if he if he wouldn't have got that specific, you're like, "Fuck, I'm like, man, no. it really was Damn, out of tune." He really was listening. <laughs> Shit, <laughs> the fucking G string. Every and I bet you thought about it for a Every while time. too. You're like, "You shit, motherfucker, dude." Yeah, I'll fucking replace you. <laughs> but you know what? The funny thing about the G string is that string broke at a gig uh, a little bit before that, and I replaced it. So that's the one string that is different than the other. Mm. So it was, it was a brand. Like, it was a new one. Yeah. So it didn't get stretched out yet. <laughs> oh, fucker. So then I was Son like, "Ah, oh, there's bitch. some vali- there's even validity to what he said." Yeah, <laughs> like, shit. he was so right. He was so right that it yeah. hurt. <laughs> It was like it's the rest of the strings were elixir. That sounded like the Dario, whatever. That yeah, that sounded like that sounded like some no, cheap he, shit. That he you wasn't like, saying that. It broke last <laughs> second. You just needed a cheap fix. Yeah. God damn it. Damn, that guy's good. Well, uh, so uh, do you have plans to do like uh, some more shows with them? Oh yeah, yeah. I, we need to get our practice down. Uh, you know. Cause that was a 45 minute set and that was a struggle to get through. Cause we didn't have a, we hadn't been practicing sure. and playing. Where'd so you guys play at? that was the Ritz and Shawnee. Okay, cool. Is that place? A, I always wanted to go in there. Is it a cool place? Yeah. They've uh, been fixing it up downtown Shawnee's. Uh, so are they starting to get like more live music in there? Yeah. Now? There's quite the white a white lighters played there. Really? Uh, I wonder what the PA is. I wonder what kind of rig they have in there. I'm not sure. They uh, have different bands. Some of them, some of them kind of make me chuckle. Like one was, uh, Lindsay's my wife's uh, uncle Dave was like super stoked about it, and I think it was a Van Halen tribute band. Oh, next Halen, uh, maybe. Next, yeah. yeah, next Halen played there. Nice. Yeah, fucking. I uh, know the guy that manages them, Joe Burris. He's like really well known around here. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, he they played that. He was Dave was really stoked about it. I think it was I, around Easter. I've actually uh, I saw some videos that Joe Burris guy posted, and they're fucking good, man. Like, they, they're pretty fucking. <laughs> I should have. I should have. I should have went. He he was like. You should come in. Yeah, I've always and, wondered how know, they're... Uncle does it sound, Dave. <laughs> yeah, does it sound pretty good in there? And, like, does it... You yeah. got a cool vibe and everything? Yeah, it was cool. Is it still, is it still like, <laughs> it seated and everything? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's still seated. 
Oh, yeah, man. it was a cool vibe, and the sound was uh, it was pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Dope, very cool. Okay, well, um, do you have a uh, does you're, you're playing all the time, man? So yeah. Like where uh, where where? Well, I'll ask you this, you know, because I don't want to do the general like where are you playing next, plug that kind of deal. What's your what's your kind of like your favorite places for people to come and watch you? Where do you think you play best at? You know, I like uh, a couple places like last summer. Uh, uh, Graham Colton booked me at uh, the Jones Assembly a couple times, and oh, that was a cool kid, venue. That yeah. was a pretty cool venue to play, and had some good listeners. Uh, I do like playing uh, the casinos. Like I'll, I'll be playing mm-hmm. Kickapoo Casino, and you know, I'm not sure when this will be out, but I play Kickapoo Casino and Black Hawk yep. Casino and Shawnee yeah, got a quite a bit emphasis on the. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's is cool that to an do inside that. joke. I don't get it. Well, no, you, say it, say black, it, say it, to, say it Black fast. Hawk, Black you, Hawk, Black Hawk, Black Hawk, Black. Oh, oh my God, Jared, you just said that. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> Jared, just <laughs> edit that out. Edit that out. Close up. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Black Hawk. Yeah, and the, the casinos are cool because it seems like <laughs> people are there to have a good time. Like. You know, any casino that I played, it's just uh, I love doing that because it's it's different than some other bars. Because even while people are there gambling, I think they need a, a break to gamble, yeah. so they come hang out for a while. And it's just uh, it's a different vibe. Like, uh, and we don't have to get into the differences in OKC and Tulsa, but there is a difference in the vibe and playing listening rooms and bars between the two. Two definitely is. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I hate to say that, but there is a big difference. But uh, like at the uh, casino. It's weird because I wouldn't have expected this, that people come and sit down. They'll come sit down 15 minutes, watch you, cheer you on, and uh, give good tips, and uh, then go back to gambling, come back through the night. So it's uh, nice. Casino gigs are really yeah, cool. I don't know if I, I wouldn't have expected that either, but that's awesome. Yeah, the guy we play with, Levi, uh, he's played over at, uh, what's the casino over in Chandler? Uh, oh, I- I- Iowa. Iowa. And it's like a, they have like, you know, a little old, PV system there and mm-hmm. but like he drew a pretty decent crowd and that little listen area over there is like not i mean you can fit probably like 30 40 people in there like comfortably you know it's a cool little listening area you know yeah. like he had pretty good reaction like you know some pretty like just nice. people gambling just walking through there so yeah it was better than i thought it was going to be you know like playing at a casino yeah uh and been playing a lot of breweries lately and that's that's good that's give or take you know it's cool like i've uh so sometimes, uh, you know, I've been able to bring for an acoustic show. This may not sound like a lot to some people who are out there, but you know, about twenty people, twenty to thirty oh, people for, yeah, acoustic. for an acoustic show. That's don't yeah. don't belittle but, yourself. But then, Fuck the, yeah. well, you thanks. said you weren't even playing shows like th- until recently. So yeah, up until right before the pandemic. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, dude. Yeah, hell yeah, doing more than a lot of people. But yeah. what I wanted to get out with that was like the next day after one of those, then I'll have zero. <laughs> Uh, You're like I'm know. sorry, bar owner. You yeah. know it's it's, it's a gamble. Can't but, win yeah. them all, man. Bars it's are just tough. kind of funny, yeah. Yeah, bars are tough. So, uh, but uh, breweries are cool because it's kind of like that same. Uh, maybe it's like the casinos, the the regulars that come and hang out, and that's their joint. Mm. It's kind of like you have regulars at the uh, breweries too. Like I had a, uh, I played uh, a Skydance. Okay, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he booked me last month. Uh, he has me. This month and was it back. the uh, owner? Yeah, Jake. Yeah, yeah, Jake. Really cool yeah. guys. Yeah, they yeah. they, they um, came out to Pig Fest. Oh yeah, yeah. I met their crew here. He wasn't. He had yeah, gone he wasn't by the here, time. Right, but uh, his uh, I think fiance now, uh, Bobby. Okay, yeah. I think I met out his... here, and and a couple of their their employees, I believe, were out here. Yeah, they, they were really really awesome. They, they were, were right really next cool. to the stage I played. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They were awesome. They were but really cool. He was cool, and the you know it was starting off rough. Uh, and then in the middle of it, you know, everybody's singing. So it's weird because <laughs> you just, when you think no one's in there, like the chicken shack at, uh, in uh, Arcadia the other day, I played there and, and I was like the new, the new one. Yeah. Have, did you play the old one when it was? I did. Yeah. I did. Yeah. So you have like a reference. For, I, for I do. And this is my first time even stepping foot in, in there. And it was like, Oh, there, I didn't think anybody was paying attention, but there was a decent crowd at the beginning. Uh, you know, decent for the food that after happy hour crowd. And then, uh, People just started uh, dancing, and uh, it was just kind of people were bobbing their heads and then singing along to some of the covers. Because uh, in those bar areas, I, I would love to just be a listening room and play my originals. Right. But I play music because I like music. 
Yeah. So people go to those places because they do want to hear something they know. And I, I don't think it's wrong to enjoy playing yeah. some cover songs or songs that you really like yeah. and playing them the way you like them. I don't, I don't think that's like a, a bad, mm-hmm. you know, like a shameful feeling to be had there or anything like that. I really enjoy yeah. playing awesome covers too. So I, I try to keep it 50-50. Mm. That way I have, have one for me, one for them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's pretty funny. Here, hey, I'm going to get you a Sweet me, Caroline. <laughs> Here's Sweet Caroline. Now hear my song about the devil. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I tried to do. <laughs> Perfect, man. Well, awesome. So, I, I, and speaking of the devil, I liked your icon, your, your, uh, flex, your, your eyes you, when you were playing. Oh, there were a couple times. Where oh, I have to see that. Yeah, there were a couple times that. when you were like, get really getting into it and you had the. Oh, kind of going. <laughs> Thanks, cool, man. man. I appreciate I that. I like. It. Well, you're getting into it. I, I, I was digging it. Uh, well, awesome, man. Uh, this this episode will probably be debuting um, May, whatever the Friday after this one is. That'll be the twelfth. The twelfth. Okay, so like May twelfth. So, uh, yeah, May twelfth. You can check out. Uh, Unless I die. Well, Good luck getting audio files. Yeah, and then it's all over. And so... uh, You'll never get the audio files. (laughs) You are safe. (laughs) (laughs) And then... uh, But yeah, go and check out Kenny's episode of The Spark and Plug. Um, He's going to have three songs on there, the ones that we talked about. They're all great. They're all awesome. And Kenny's got... He's literally playing all the time. So he's he's no longer putting his music on the back burner (laughs) and uh, playing all the time, man. And it's really admirable, to be honest. Because sometimes... It's it's fucking hard, dude. <laughs> it's hard. I'm sure as you as you were no doubt saying, like sometimes it's zero people. Sometimes it's like, mm-hmm. wow, this is twenty thirty. Hey, man, think of it as like a paid rehearsal, it's paid practice. Exactly, and you know, you do take it personally. Anything that goes wrong, you take personally. I was uh, I was watching this uh, interview with Linda Ronstadt, and her manager was talking, and she she's awesome, great singer. I had forgotten how uh, much I loved her stuff. Dude, yeah. But they were talking about being at a bar, and uh, he was saying this about Linda Ronstadt. Ronstadt, um, like if somebody was be sitting there in the crowd and they whisper over to the other person, she would take that personally, and you know exactly how that feels because yeah. if you see somebody when you're on the stage and you see somebody staring at you yeah, and whispering, you you're think like, they're hey, talking. Motherfucker, sh- what are you saying? <laughs> yeah. Or if you see them laugh, yeah, you're, you're like, like, oh, oh man, they're laughing at me. Right, what this shit <laughs> just got fucking personal. Dude. <laughs> So, and then you got to get rid of that. And that's kind of, I'm kind of at a point where I'm, I'm kind of getting rid of that. Here's, uh, again, going back to spirituality, uh, here's, and I'm trying to act more too. Here's what I try to do with a gig and even an audition or even an acting role. You know, when you're, you're on your way home, usually going home anywhere, but you're going through your usual route mm-hmm. and you go through this stop sign. And then about a mile down the road, you're like, did I stop at that stop sign? You know, because we've all done oh, that. Because yeah. you, you're just in your habit. You're, you're being 100% natural. And so that's my goal is to, at the gig, acting Not even gig, remember. is to just be 100% natural intuition and gut instinct. And, and that's hard to do. That's, Hell you yeah, know, I agree. Being, and that's where you get your confidence from and get rid of insecurity. I don't think it's just saying, hey, I'm going to start being confident. Insecure. I think you in the to, mirror. I think the, you go through <laughs> intuition first, mm-hmm. and you trust yourself. Your full natural. I think that's yeah. my problem. Is I don't trust myself, and I know I'm going to screw up. So I just mm-hmm. get in my head before every show, and I'm just like, "What oh. do you look at when you play? Where do I look? What do you look at? Do you do you pick something to look at, or do you pick a piece out? You know, do you like look past people, or do you look at the ground? What do you? I, I do it all. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I'll just like typewriter it. Watch I, the I'll, eye contact in I'll, the episode. Yeah. Maybe. I'll start the, on the left side, go from this table to the next table. And then sometimes I'll have something in my head and I'll stare at the ground for a second. Yeah. And then it goes back to that all, it's kind of funny, you guys know this and people listening if you're into music, but uh, it's kind of crazy how time warps happen in the middle of a verse. You're like, oh, are we already, at this? I feel like I've been mm-hmm. dazing for about five minutes now. Dude, fucking, you play <laughs> two hours, dude. And before you <laughs> yeah. know it, it's two hours. Yeah, it is like, like a time warp. That's funny. I haven't heard crap. it described as that, but yeah, it is, yeah. it is like that. But you're like, man, the chorus should have been here already. But it's just because you're such a natural, uh, whether you've been practicing it with the band, sorry, are, are doing it, you've just kind of in your own natural mood. 
and it's when you start thinking about it mm. coming out of that time warp when you mess up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. The same, yeah, the same thing the with same like when you're true. playing to a click, you know, you, listen, yeah. you stop hearing the click and you're like, oh, what the fuck where the click go? And then it comes back and you're like, there's a click. Ah, oh, shit, I'm already too late. Mm-hmm. You're like, start dragging and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's Perfect. happened to me multiple times. Yeah, that's, yeah, man, that, the click is a, is a nasty yatch. It's, it's like your best friend, but also Tricky the, your worst enemy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jared just dropped a, a bottle of liquid and I think it was his, his nope. spitter. It landed up. It's good. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Hell yeah, it's good, brother. Everybody. Good job, dude. Is that <laughs> sweet tea? <laughs> yeah, you want to drink? <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, Lord. Don't forget your Coke. If that was the one from the Why freezer, I don't want spicy? it exploding. <laughs> okay. A man, wow, he really had our back there. What a true gentleman. And that's why. You want another coat for that one? When you, <laughs> oh, no, I'm good. <laughs> when you go to K- KP shows, just don't laugh at him. He will chunk a guitar at you. I've yeah. done that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, get down there and beat your ass. <laughs> dude, well, honestly, honestly, I would pay good money to see that at a show. <laughs> honestly, dude, if you, if you went up there and just whacked somebody with a guitar, I would. God. That would be fucking hilarious, Can you imagine man. getting dome wrong? <laughs> Jesus Breaking Christ. Breaking shit all comically like in the old. The... No, it doesn't even break. It's just like, don't. Like, well, that's like, just he just yeah, goes back up there and like home. tunes it back up and shit. <laughs> I was singing like honky tonk man uh, <laughs> when he'd walk in there with that little ukulele looking thing. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, uh, do you guys got anything to ask, uh, old, old Kenny? Uh, I don't think so. No. No. Uh, okay. All do, right. Do you yeah. want me to ask Kenny something? Uh, no, I don't. You can if you want to. I don't but care. Do you want me to? Uh, oh wait! Sure, I don't have anything. What's so. your take oh, okay. on cold ding dongs? Oh, cold ding dongs. That's a good one. We had a good conversation. Do you have a little time. Debbie favorite? I oh. do have a, a a little Debbie favorite. I think it's more of the Twinkies. Okay, okay. yeah. A yeah, Twinkie good. man. Ah, you can't go bad with a Twinkie. Yeah, you know? Twinkies a safe choice. I love cosmic brownies. Cosmic brownies and Star Crunches. Good man. Mm-hmm. Like I haven't the, had any the chemicals of that in a while. they put in it, dude. Just fuck. Crack makes my eyeball eyeballs buzz. Yeah, like, I don't know. Like, my left arm kind of goes numb. I'm not going to lie. I, I really like those strawberry Swiss rolls. Oh, boy. <laughs> the, the strawberry shortcakes. <laughs> Dude, those get God. me every time. Damn, boy. Those are so fucking good. Oh, I've just shit. been going with big spoonfuls of peanut butter at home. Dude, I did that That's, last night. I do that all fantastic. the time. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did that last night. I need to stop. It's so good. Dude, yeah. Peanut butter is amazing. It just la- it lasts so long, too. Yeah. You're just like, yeah. And we fool ourselves like in the avocado family type. Like, oh, it's a good fat, you know? Because <laughs> it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's like if you eat like uh, six spoonfuls of it, it's oh, just man. like not good. And then you got to kill it with some milk, dude. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah, you got to force that milk, deal, dude. dude. Oh, man. It, it cuts Stop, right dude. through Can the sweet salivating? shit, dude. Yeah. You see all over the He's mic, like, man. Sweet Big Christ. glass of cold milk and a big spoon of peanut butter and... I, I will go to town. Sometimes I'll, <laughs> sometimes I'll wake up in the middle of the night. My favorite time Dude, of the year is, uh, straight to Ada, folks. is uh, my birthday because I'll get like a huge cake. And my favorite type of cake is like Sam's store-bought cake. Just yeah. like, give me some cheap fucking cake. And I want a baguette. I don't want any of that fancy shit. I want a cheap-ass Walmart Sam's cake. And nobody else eats it except for me mm-hmm. and my dad. And so afterwards, I'll have like half of this huge cake. And I'll just wake up for like three nights in a row, like two o'clock in the morning, like my body senses oh my it. God, and I'll go so in there bad. and I'll just open it up and I'll leave a spoon in the side of the thing. I, I don't want it cold. Mm-hmm. I want it warm. I mm-hmm. want it at room temperature. I'll leave a spoon in there and I'll crack that song bitch open. But everybody knows it when you crack it open because it's so fucking Oh, yeah. Loud. It's so loud. <laughs> but it got to the point where I don't give a shit anymore. I just do it. So I do the same thing, but not with cake every year for Christmas. With gra- crawfish? No, my grandpa. Oh, God. Oh, oh God. <laughs> Sucking the brains out. Oh, They're going in the morning. No. Your breath. Yeah. Oh. So my grandpa gets us a, all of us a tub of Ralph's beef jerky for Christmas. Oh, boy. And I, I do. keep I it by Ralph's my bed beef. and I'll yeah. just like, wake up at two in the dude, morning. Dude, I'll eat that shit it. like chips, dude. I'll oh, just, yeah. My, teeth my whole get life. Raw and shit. I've yeah. had like a little Ralph's gap in the, back, in the very back of my teeth. So, like anything meaty. Wait, like, dude, I got some steak today. I got a piece of steak back dude, there right now. So I speak. can't do it, man. It's It bugs me. It's got so... meat tooth. I start sucking on it and stuff. It bugs me so much, man. I can't do it if it's anything. That's living, you know what I'm isn't saying? It? You know, you know what I'm saying? Being alive. I do, I do, I do. But here's a funny thing: a man who loves to eat meat and burgers. I've been vegetarian for a year and a half. Really? really? Yeah. Have I, you noticed like a uh, big benefits in your health? I mean, yeah, or anything yeah. like that? Yeah. Like I used to have restless leg syndrome. Really? And that completely went away. Wow. Wow. Interesting. I uh, used to have. I have esophagitis. <laughs> Giving everybody the goods of my health. This is all HIPAA, so everybody <laughs> listening it needs to. You say esophagitis? Get, yeah. And, so with your esophagus? Yeah. 
eosinophilic esophagitis. It's the white blood cells. And that's gotten so much better since. What, uh, what is that? Like, does it like affect, like, do you throat close up or something? Or? I, I have a hard time uh, swallowing things. Like, oh. I have to drink a lot of liquid when I, when I drink or when I eat and mm-hmm. help kind of get it down. And so it, like meat inflame that or something? Meat, it, just because it so uh, sticks together more. Wow. It's gotcha. like, uh, it's, I've always, I've sometimes had it stuck there and it, like, yeah. been stuck you for an hour. Spill it. Oh, I'm not terrible. choking. And I'm I've not, been oh, it's got to feel awful. I've God. been there. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you have esophagitis. Seriously. Yeah, because because I can't because Dylan knows it, dude. I I eat really slow because if I eat fast, I'll choke. No, you have. Uh, do you have? I'm high fiving you right here oh, about yeah. the, uh, es- not just regular esophagitis, but eosinophilic esophagitis. Look I mean, it up. I probably do. I can't eat very fast. Don't tell Aaron dude. that he's a hypochondriac. Are the uh, tablet oh, no. <laughs> tablets like the not the not the capsules, but tablets? Are they hard to go down? Like pills? Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, they are kind of hard to go down. I mean, you know those big old like big blue cold pills with the gels and shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can't do those anymore. I'll choke on them. I was like <laughs> coughing back up. I'm like, God yeah. damn. I'll send you some literature. I quit laughing, <laughs> Jared. Yeah, Jared. It's this a is serious, serious disease, dude. I could have insensitive ass. This one time I did it right in the on cue parking lot before work. I could have died, motherfucker. Is that funny? Hmm? Is that funny? You still laughing, motherfucker? He's huh? laughing pretty hard. Yeah. <laughs> It's like half the table is Dr. Drew, the other half is Adam Corolla. <laughs> you fucking shit ass. You laugh at my misery. I can't take those cold pills anymore. Yeah, because you would do the same, and I know you would. Well, duh. <laughs> you got me. Yeah. So I mean, so, we're friends, are we not? What do you what's what do you primarily uh, like? What's your what's your go to meals as a as a vegetarian? Well, my wife's a great cook. She's uh, uh, makes a lot of Indian dishes. She's a uh, Asian Indian. And uh, she she's a great cook. She even teaches cooking classes. Wow! And so she'll make so much. Uh, but we have uh, our go to meal. I don't know. Just uh, just a bunch I don't of mean veggies. To say that like you know, vegetarian. They have to. Ha- they can only eat like four different things. You know, I didn't mean to like sa- make it sound like I was boxing. Oh, you oh I didn't think like you were. That. Okay, yeah. I was just wondering if there was like maybe some you know, stuff off the top of your head that you were like snack on or something like that. Nah, peanut yeah. butter. I still, <laughs> pe- I still eat peanut butter. I'll still eat eggs and, uh, and dairy, but, uh, yeah, I don't think you're a veggist, but I like all the vegetables. Mm-hmm. I, can get I think I, I like was a, the butt of a joke uh, there. Yeah. Nobody's really going to comment on my veggist. Uh, a zucchini makes pretty good substitute for pasta noodles. Actually, it does. I, tr- I wasn't too sure about that <laughs> and I tried it and it's, it's pretty good. I, I was amazed with that too. <laughs> can you say what the- Nobody can own that deal. I'm oh, sorry. What did you, I'm sorry. No, he, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. We just left him there. We left hey, him I, there. I looked him in the eyes the second time, and I'm going to let La it go. La Tar Pits, man. We just, he's sinking slowly. Sorry, Kenny. Oh, man. It went right just over like my the, head. I'm like so sorry. <laughs> Please don't explain it, because I'll feel really stupid if you explain it. Hey, it's... it's, it's Ignorance is bliss. Just let me not n- never get the joke. Oh, if, you, if you'd like a printout of tonight's uh, broadcast, <laughs> just watch it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to torture Kenny anymore and keep him here talking about sweet nothings. So no, thank you. <laughs> he didn't even say like no. He was just. Like, oh, thank I think you. we should do the fuck one, kill one, marry one segment with Kenny. That'd no. be a good one. <laughs> Why okay, you Jared, do? you pick somebody. Dylan, you pick somebody. I'll pick us with somebody. Okay. Well, okay. Okay. I'm gonna go with the goat, old Danny DeVito. Okay. 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 Uh, my turn. Uh, yeah. Jared. Okay. Uh, Lori Lightfoot. Lori Lightfoot? Yeah, the Chicago, former Chicago mayor. Is that too obscure for everybody? Uh, I don't know who that is. Okay. Um, hmm. hold, on, hold on. Randy Johnson. Randy Johnson. He's that Why skinny baseball all- player yeah. from the years back, yesterday yeah. year. I was going to, yeah. Kind of had a mullet, maybe, red hair mullet. Wait, what was yours, Dylan? Jared? Yeah. That was a cop <laughs> out. You got to pick somebody that's not in there. No, no. Okay. Keep it. Keep uh, it. It's fine. I want to see how this goes. Oh, Jared's going <laughs> to, you better fucking marry me, motherfucker. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, my other option was going to be um, Santiago Ramon from uh, WWE. Oh, wow. Interesting. Uh, like do we... you know who Santiago Ramon is? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jared, what was yours? Danny DeVito. Danny DeVito. Um, <clears throat> should, I, should I keep a guy in there or should I do a chick? I think we it, should. Uh, n- throw, yeah, th- throw in a chick. Yeah, no, we don't want people thinking uh, okay. Well, sexist. Lori Lifeo was a chick, but uh, you got to know what she looks was. like. Hold though. on. <laughs> Uh, I like how you threw in that. Oh, sorry, she is a chick. Sorry, she is a woman. Uh, oh God. Oh yeah. Oh okay. Yeah, Jerry pulled up forever. Yeah, that's Lori Lightfoot. Get, show that to Kenny. Well, that's. Oh yeah. That's yeah, a little rude. She's just a, uh, you know, 
No, but you gotta know what she looks like. If you know, like we all know what Danny DeVito looks like. We all know True what. Uh, okay. What, so, anyways, say? I started blasting. What'd you say? I said, well, he said, oh God. Santiago. No, I'm saying, what was the person you said? Oh, Santiago Ramon. Yeah, we all know what those people look like. You gotta know what Lori Life looks mm-hmm. like. Okay, so fuck one, kill one, marry one. I would uh, fuck them all. <laughs> yeah, oh, the ultimate answer. Damn, that was a good one. I never thought. I never thought about that. Like, just fucking go full balls deep on everybody, man. Just go to town. Oh, poor well, Santiago. If you're like me, balls deep isn't very far. All right, all right, all right. So we'll we'll wind down. Um, lastly, Kenny, where can everybody uh, find find your music? Find uh, where you're playing next. All that all that cool stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm gonna be playing around Oklahoma City quite a bit. Uh, and spiraling out. Uh, geographically not in my head uh from there and <laughs> allegedly <more>. yeah <laughs> and uh you can find i'm on spotify youtube uh, amazon apple music the usual platforms you can find me on the instagrams and the facebooks dope man and we, all that jazz so uh does yeah, uh just, uh and you can probably go to like outsiders productions or something like that to find it any cool movie stuff you guys are doing or anything oh like yes that? please do and play it loud and yeah yeah like you that. can find uh play it loud through outsiders productions facebook and instagram uh we have some uh narrative projects online too one called rough cut uh it's a, about local artists that's pretty cool kind of hits it shows the feels of a lot of indie artists so oh very cool yeah, it's it's free on youtube too awesome okay well fucking appreciate it so much man thanks a lot and uh Hopefully, uh, you'll go and check this. Uh, everybody listen and go and check his uh, Spark and Plug episode out if you haven't already. And uh, check him out everywhere on the Instagrams and the Facebooks and all, and all that cool stuff. And if you got anything else you want to plug, man, you know, feel free. Yeah, just uh, check all those things out. Uh, you know, I appreciate that. Come out to the shows if you want to. Uh, and as far as uh, the time we've had here at the podcast, uh, you'll be hearing from my lawyers. <laughs> Oh, uh, and I wanted to say, uh, doesn't your doesn't your wife do like a uh, uh, whole food kind oh, of or yeah, something like yeah. that? Thanks for asking. It's called Marisona, M E R A S O N A, Marisona dot com, and she has a doggy health product and a human health product. It's uh, freeze dried uh, stuff and having great results. Uh, please look that up too. That is man. Yeah, you can yeah order well, I online. mean, you had talked, you know, uh, the you talked about the vegetarian stuff, and mm-hmm. it, man, it's like. It's one of those deals where you just got to, you know, you just got to be like, fine, I'm going to fucking do it. Mm-hmm. And because I've, you know, looked to do it because it's like all the inflammation and everything all goes totally. down, goes away and everything. But yeah, definitely cool stuff. And go check her, her stuff out. And uh, thank you. Hopefully, um, hopefully it takes off and it's awesome. Yeah. You know, so. Thanks. Thanks. All right. This has been uh, Spark and Plug Talks, episode 10 with Kenny Pitts. Uh, thanks for tuning in and tuning out. Peace. <laughs>